Hello everyone and welcome back to Alan Luthery. This is video 8 and the final installment, hopefully, of my entry to the Great Guitar Build-Off 2020. Starting this one off slightly differently, this is actually the beginning of my filming because I don't want to ruin the surprise of the reveal to you. And, well, I suppose there's a, a spoiler right there. We should, at the end of this video, have strings on this guitar. And if that's not exciting, nothing is. So, you know the drill by now. Grab yourself a cup of tea, get comfortable, and enjoy the video. And of course, please, please, please go down below and hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel, and hit that bell icon to be notified any time I release new videos. <laughs> All right, so this video has to start off with probably one of my least favorite jobs in an entire guitar build, and that's sorting out the frets. Now, they should be installed pretty straight and flat already. Just to make 100% sure, we're going to level every one of the frets and then come back, crown each one of them individually and polish them all up to a nice high sheen. So starting off, I actually need to mask off the entire fretboard because we put a lot of work and effort into this already and the last thing I want to do is take a big lump out of it. Now it's definitely worth saying at this stage, I already checked with with a notched straight edge, I already came back and just right way around checked for if I use the right side it would help so using this I can tell that my neck is perfectly straight so I won't be you know if the neck's not straight if there's a bit of a back bow you end up taking the center frets down too much you, the result is still the same it's a perfectly playable instrument but you don't really want to do that Right, now it's all masked off, nicely protected, and I'm happy with that. So, the next step is to come back with a permanent marker. Actually, start at this end so you don't end up coloring in your own hand. And just mark the top of every fret. Now, using the longest leveling beam I have, which is almost covering every fret, move this guy down to about here. And I just want to... Now, I have no pressure on this. This is the, only the weight of the leveling beam. Check where we are. So, that's good, that's good. That's good, good. The middle of this one isn't great. And down here is a bit iffy. That one is a low one. All right, not too low, but the very top of it is brushed, but the rest of it isn't. 
And what you're looking for here is the top of every is the top of every fret to be taken down. I'm finding that kind of difficult to see actually. I'm going to go back with a green marker. No, I'm not. Come back with a blue marker. And I'm only doing this because the black is a little bit difficult to see. Yeah, way, way easier. So this guy's still right in the middle. It's okay, but not great. This one is quite low. Center this one and that one. And the very last one is a little bit low, but that's actually perfectly fine. No, we have one more thing to do here. I'm going to get about four layers of masking tape, put them all onto the 12th fret. Actually, this masking tape is thick, so three layers will do it. And then remask our remark and what this step does is just create a little bit of a fall away just it helps you get that action the action just a little bit better swapping to a different leveling beam because that one is just it's just too long and you remember i said this one was still a bit, little bit low it won't be anymore So I'm using 120 grit paper for this, but on this one now it's quite spent. Okay, and we're finished with the leveling beams. Now one last time, remark. So what I want to do here is using this three corner file, which you can see has a safety edge ground on it or a safe edge basically round it over so it won't damage the fingerboard and I want to come in and I, what I want at the end of this is one nice thin uniform line down the middle and as I'm going I'm kind of it's ju not just going in a back forward, but I'm also rounding it. And you kind of want to get this line down to about at least a millimeter wide. Or really at most a millimeter wide. And if you can see here, I have a good grip here and my thumb is guiding it as well. So my thumb really is managing the rotation of the file. Whereas, uh, along with uh, my other index finger. Because if you go too far on this, it's not a good time. And that should just about do it. Now next up, I need to bring this up to a bit of a polish. So I start off with 240 grit paper at first. And I have found that folding it over like this gives you the best kind of working area. At this stage, I can sand the top, but with the 240, don't sand it too much because you will change the geometry of the fret. Ever so slightly, but precision is what we're looking for. I'm just looking here, I'm using reflections just so 
I can make sure there's no facets anywhere. And that is pretty good. Next up, I'm onto some 600 grit. And once you get up to 600, you can be a little bit more, um, not sloppy, but you don't have to be quite as careful because it takes quite a while for this to take off any reasonable amount of material. And with the 600, I want to get the ends here as well. Because we also want them nicely polished. And after six, we go up to 1200. And what you're looking for is a nice uniform texture as you do this, because if it's uniform, it should be all at the same grit. And once we're happy, it's all up to 1200 properly, 2000. Maybe you can see why this is one of my least favorite jobs. It's pretty tedious. It's bad enough on one fret, but this guitar has 22 frets. So this is two hours of hand cramps, basically. Now, and that is pretty much a lovely shiny fret. And for a lot of manufacturers, definitely most store-bought guitars, this is perfectly fine, but we don't do store-bought here. We don't do most here. So I'll take a little bit of Autosol metal polish and rub it in. And now that is a shiny fret. Jeez, you could do your hair in the morning in this. And don't forget the fret ends. Now, now we're happy with the fret. What we're not happy about the fact that I have to do it 21 more times. So let me do that and I'll check in when we're finished. Finally I'm all finished and this right here is why I put this initial piece. You should be able to see all of the other pieces are now attached to this one long strip. And we should get majority of it off. A little bit right here. That is pretty good. Our last step now before we finish up the finish on this is to actually drill these holes. So I wasn't able to get my hands on a proper 11 mil brad point, but I did get an 11 mil twist bit, spiral bit. So we'll put that there for the moment, and I'm going to use my 10 mil. I'll use my 10 mil brad point bit because this will be nice and accurate. And I already marked the holes from earlier on. Now this guy has two spurs on the outside. So as I'm drilling, I can make sure that these spurs are cutting evenly for the first little bit.
and then just double check I know that I need 25 mil hole here no still miles off it perfect one down one to go Great, now that we're down there, we swap over to the 11 mil. Oh no. Okay, so just there, the chuck in this drill wasn't big enough for the drill bit. It only goes with the 10 mil drill bit, or 10 mil shaft. So, had to use the drill press real quick, and it went super smooth. The last thing now is to drill for the ground wire. So I need to bring a very small hole from this post into the, into the control cavity. And I always use just a little bit of a sacrificial piece here. This is a, a, a not very good uh, scraper that I just don't like. <laughs> Using a little bit of an awl to just start the hole would be a good idea. And there it is. Okay, we actually got into the channel. Huh, I expected it to go into the that's perfectly fine actually makes it look neater now that's all done i'm happy with it i'm going to just give the body it's a little bit rough feeling it's not not bad at all so i'm just going to get this is some 1200 paper get a square and just a touch of water so i'll start here literally one drop and with the paper i'm using pretty much no pressure it's just the water holding it down how long i go until until all the rough spots are taken down and it really shouldn't take very long I'm not trying to wet sand this to get it perfectly smooth. I'm literally just getting rid of the, the hard pieces because we didn't grain fill. This is never going to be a perfectly flat glass glass finish. Bring in the light so I can just see what I'm doing as well. That needs a little bit more water. And this is just normal tap water. There's no nothing added to it or anything. And its only purpose is just to help take away any of the, the swarf that's created. Clean shop rag or shop towel. And that is pretty good. It's more feel than anything here, but this does dull up the finish and touch. So I'm gonna go now and do the entire guitar. When I'm done with that, I will either buff it up or apply some wax to it just to bring back the nice shine that I have. And then probably tomorrow at this stage, Monday, will be assembly. And I want to have it playing tomorrow. Anyway, I'm gonna go sand and I'll see you in, well, from the magic of TV in about a second. So the next thing I want to do is to make up some shielding paint. And I have my modern pestle here and I have a solid graphite pencil. You can pick these up from a lot of art supply stores. And I'm sure you can guess where I'm going with this one. You put the pencil into 
the mortar and you grind it. And I'm only going to do half the pencil for this one. That should be absolutely plenty. A little bit of dust in there. So pop it in. And grind away. Alright, now that we have our lovely fine powder, we just need to put it into in this bowl. And probably half is enough. Put that to the side. And then add, this is just an acrylic paint, get from any kind of art store. Same kind of stuff you would have used in, in school. And you want to mix this close to one to one ratio with a little bit more powder. And this gives you a pretty good, a pretty good conductive paint. And make sure this is mixed really, really, really well. I remember watching a video on this when I was just looking into it myself. And there was a guy got a load of different paints. Um, I can't even think of any other types. But acrylic was the one. What he did was he got, he mixed up this with all the different kinds that he could find. Poster paints, PVAs, I assume, I don't know painted a line and then checked the resistance along that line and acrylic came out top of the top of the batch and he compared it to I think it was a, a paint that Stumac sell and it was the same or better even I can't really remember anyway that is enough so I'll go and get the guitar and then what you want to do with the paint Simply enough, just paint it into all the cavities. And just make sure you get good, good coverage. And I usually do two coats, really. And I find that gives me a pretty good shielding effect. So I'll get this done and then we'll move on to the next step. Next thing I need to do is actually install all of the electronics into the guitar. And the reason I'm doing electronics before say the bridge or strings or any of that carry on is because it's kind of difficult to get the pickups in when the strings are on. And it just makes sense to do it this way to me. But once the pickups can be at least placed uh, I don't screw them down just then because I need to have my strings on so I can position them properly and get the pole pieces lined up perfectly. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. But we can actually start on this side. And I need to have a ground wire that comes from this post into there. And just doing this, I'm going to use some old speaker wire. Wire is super, super handy. You know, technically, just bits like this floating around, you find them all the time. But wire is really good to salvage out of old electronics that you have. Uh, you might not notice at the time, but you know, this is, these are from old speakers, really just battered, useless ones, really. And when it's going out the door, just grab it and pull the guts out of it. You know, I, I've got miles of this stuff floating around the house at the, at the moment. But if you do, if you do salvage the wire from these, especially if you're a hobby a hobbyist at home, 
you'll never need to actually buy wire, which is great. And then this is my pre-wired kit. Once again, these are for sale on my shop, a couple of different ones. And if you want custom wiring, just give me a shout. It's absolutely no problem to do. And anything you do pick up from my shop, you know, it helps me a huge amount. And it helps to keep this channel going as well. There are my two volumes. So let's... These are the cables that needs to go up to the switches. Switch singular. Let's feed them through. This would be a little easier if I had taken them all apart so I wasn't trying to feed three braided wires through, but uh, I made my choice. And I'm using one of these square plates for the jack. I wanted to use a football one because I prefer the curve, but um, I, I, I didn't get one. <laughs> and let's position this. I'm going to just eyeball this. Put there. And I just drilled the two diagonals first and that that will then position the plate properly making it way easier to drill the other two now that the screws themselves and some candle wax The wax just helps the screws kind of get in and get a good hold. Cool. And I decided to go with a chrome switch. Now we'll see, we'll see fairly soon if that was a good idea. But uh, it'll definitely be interesting. One down in there. I always find when soldering it's easier to Try and position the wires where they need to be and then solder. So I usually put a little hook into the end of the wires and then put that hook through because usually there's a hole on whatever you're um, soldering to. And this cloth pushback wire is really, really nice to work with, I think. Just the fact that you don't have to try and strip it really, really accurately. You just pull back the insulation, pop it on, then pull the insulation back up. For years I used um, just speaker wire, same as what I used for the ground in this. And it works the finest, but the pushback wire, I think, just gives you a little bit more. Now, neck pick up first. Yep, this is neck. Now 
and fit. I built a guitar once and I went to put the pickup in. It didn't fit. Oh, that was a bad day. Made a mess of that. Now next we'll move on to the bridge studs because they are a part that I'm not particularly looking forward to. Because I believe these are very, very slightly oversized. And they are just about so this has a smooth portion of it and then a ridged portion and the smooth portion fits into the holes but the ridged does not and that's it's an anchoring system essentially so these are going to need a little bit of persuasion there yeah, perfect so get my small hammer and a block just to um because i don't want to hit them themselves place the guitar down so it's not on the neck rest now the contact points are all the back of the guitar this would be so much better if i had a press of some description but i don't Now, last but certainly not least, we need to put in the strap buttons. And that's the major, uh, that's all of the easy stuff, shall we say. So we're going to go ahead real quick and assume that our truss rod is good. Pop this guy in because it's a bit of a friction fit at the moment. Put that in the right way around, it might help. I'll pop it in. The truss rod, do, the cover does come out, but you need to use a bit of a blade. And then it pops out. And you can see now why I use the chrome switch. Goes with my chrome knobs. Okay, we can get this off. Throw that away over there. And strings. Now it's kind of annoying. I usually would put on kind of junky cheap strings at the moment leave them on for two weeks and then come back and put on a decent set and rarely would i use these are the dario nyxls rarely very very rarely would i actually use these first off on a build because you're really taking a chance here if um when i do go to sell this if the new owner decides that he wants 11s 
you've just wasted a perfectly good set of not very cheap strings. But I will get these strings on and get back to you. And finally, strings on, we just need to position and commit to our pickup placement. I'm lining it up with the end of the neck as well to make sure that it doesn't wander anyway. Straight to the middle of the pole there, the middle of the pole there, and we're level there. So. We commit to one first. There's one, and now we kind of rotate it until it's correct over here. And in it goes, and that's spot on. Okay, so I'm gonna go through this finish off the other one and get back to you when that's done. Done and dusted. Well, <laughs> kind of, like not really at all. I still have to go and set this up and everything, but insofar as the build, we're finished. Amazing. So this is where we're gonna call it for this video. And for almost the last video in this series, one small one coming with the sound demo after it's been set up. Unfortunately, I will be doing the demo. Unfortunately for you guys, I get to play this thing and I can already tell you it plays It's gonna play stupidly well just from that little noodle I had there with the nut way too high The action is you could park a bus under that It's not that bad, but still, you know, there's buzz and everything everywhere. It's not staying in tune everything, but I'm gonna have a lot of fun filming this as a bit of a sound demo tomorrow really cool so the competition is coming up on this Saturday, four days away, three days away. Today's Wednesday. How many ever days that is. And hopefully I will be going through to the next round. I'm hopeful, but I don't expect it. If you get me, there's, I think, five are going through to the next round and there's about 130 of us in it. So I'm going to hope, but I'm not going to hold my breath. Anyway, hopefully, regardless, I've had a lot of fun doing this. It's probably my most stressful build so far because doing it all in front of the camera and opening myself up to the critiques, which, tell you what, that's fun. But thank you so much, everyone, for coming along for this trip. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I will be keeping up this YouTube thing. I already have my next build planned. I'll be taking a quick break, about, a, about two weeks before we start into that build. And I hope you'll join me for that one as well. But for now, make sure to hit like and subscribe and leave comments and hit the bell icon if you do want to see more content from me. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming along with me. And we'll see you again soon.